In the previous video, we explored some common third-party middlewares, but now we want to look at actually building our own so we can understand how they work. We looked at Redux Logger, which is a very common middleware for logging state and state transitions to the console. Let's look at how we might build our own simple version of this. All we need to do for this middleware is log the current state, the action being dispatched, and log the next state, and then return it. It's important that we return it so that the next middleware in the chain gets invoked. Going back to our sample notes app, every time the state transition happens, we're not really seeing anything in the console. So there's no real way to know what the state of the application is. So let's add logging middleware so that we can understand what's happening in our app. To start, under our Redux folder, let's add a new folder called middlewares. Inside of that, I'm going to create a new file called logger. The way that middleware is structured is it starts with a function that receives store. So we're just going to write a function that receives store as its argument. As mentioned in a previous video, store has various functions available to us, such as dispatch and get state. The next part of writing Redux middleware is we have to return a function from this function. And this function is going to receive a function called next. There is a lot of functions going on here, but we're going to break it up and make it a little bit more clear in a moment. The final part of writing Redux middleware is we have to return one final function that receives our action. The reason that Redux middleware is structured this way is so that Redux can call each of the functions sequentially and then know when your middleware is done executing so that it can call the next middleware in the chain. That's the purpose of this next function. The console.group command is going to group all of our console logs together so that we know that they're all coming from the same action being dispatched and it'll be easier to read in the console. So let's name our group based on the action type. It's important that when you're using console group, you have to make sure you call console group end so that the browser knows when the console group has ended. The next thing we want to know is the current state of the application, as well as the action being dispatched. Let's start with the action being dispatched. So I'm going to create just a regular console.log, and I'm going to say action, and we're just going to log whatever the action is. The next thing we want to know is the previous state, right? And because we're in the middle of a state transition, it is considered the previous state and not the next state. So we're going to write previous state. Now, if you remember from the video on stores, we can call store.getState to read the current state of the application. Store.getState, perfect. Now, here's the most important part of middleware. It's very important that you call this next function with the action that's being dispatched, like so. In addition, it's very important that you actually return this from the middleware. Again, this is so that Redux knows that your middleware is done executing and it can call the next middleware in the chain. Let's store the results of calling this as result and then make sure that we return it at the bottom. Once we've called next, we know that Redux has invoked our reducer and the state has actually been updated. So now we're going to create another console log, and it's going to be called next state. And again, we can just read the state like we were previously. So that's all that's involved in writing our, our logging middleware. Let's make sure that we actually export this function as well. So now we have logging middleware, but we actually need to tell our Redux store about it. To do this, let's open the store.js file. So here's where we're creating our store for the first time. Create store accepts a few other arguments. One could be the default state, but we can also apply middleware here as well. Let's give that a shot. So we need to import our logging middleware. Middleware. And we're going to go into our Redux file, middlewares, logger, and now we've got it. There's one other thing we're going to need to do. Redux provides us a utility function called apply middleware. What apply middleware does is it tells Redux hey, this second argument, it's not the initial state of the application. It's actually middleware, and you should call it as such. So let's apply our logging middleware here. Now our logging middleware has been applied to the store. Let's go back to the application and check that that worked. Let's try and type something and see that it gets logged to the console. As you can see, on every state transition, everything is getting logged to the console. That's nice because it helps us debug what's happening in our application in real time. So when writing your first custom Redux middleware, the syntax can be a little hard to grasp. Remember, it's a function which returns a function which returns another function. The most important thing to remember is that you always return the next state. Finally, 
It's important to note that you can also use store.dispatch from within your middleware to dispatch new actions, but you must be aware that this is going to trigger your middleware again. So that's how to write our own custom Redux middleware. Again, you could think of a lot of different use cases for this. Logging is just one of the many.